Andre, hi. Tell us, if you would, about ESCOM's Just Energy Transition. So the ESCOM Just Energy Transition is an integral part of our corporate strategy. Uh, we need to build new generation capacity. We need to decarbonize. We need to solve South Africa's uh, electricity crisis by adding as much capacity as we can, as quickly as we can, as affordably as we can, which leads us to the, the really large scale rollout of new renewable energy generation capacity. But we have to bear in mind that currently about 91% uh, of the electricity that we generate comes from coal-fired plants. Our plants are old, they are on average 41 years old and they have had a very hard life. Mm -hmm. So we are going to accelerate the retirement of these plants and of course all of this change creates a tremendous amount of anxiety amongst those who've invested in the coal value chain. So what we need to do is to take the inevitable energy transition mm -hmm. and make sure that it is just to those communities that have invested generations of sweat equity into coal as a commodity. We can't just put a padlock on the gate and walk away. We have to really work at enabling the transition as a just one. How are you calming that anxiety? What actions are you taking? Two things. I think uh, we need to communicate. You can never communicate enough. Uh, and I don't think we have communicated enough. We need to do more of that. But then you also need to deliver. You need to actually have proof points on the ground of people gainfully employed in new green technologies. Uh, if you don't do either of those, then you will inevitably give rise to a lot of suspicion, uh, a lot of concerns that are legitimate, and uh, you, you need to keep on plugging away at this. How should South Africa be collaborating with the global community for a just energy transition? What we are offering, I think, is, is an opportunity to act as the uh, laboratory for some of these ideas. Our flagship Just Energy Transition project, our Komati power station, which was finally shut down on the 31st of October after having served South Africa for more than 60 years. Mm -hmm. it, it, breathed, it breathed its last breath. Um, that, is, that is where we want to repurpose and repower and also retrain. And what we're finding is that the global community are coming to us wanting to learn about how to do this. Mm -hmm. Now, I won't proclaim to have any specific wisdom in this regard. We are learning by doing it. But I think the fact that we are right at the cutting edge of implementing these changes um, also give us an advantage to attract a lot of concessional financing. Just for Kumati, we have uh, obtained from the World Bank and the Climate Investment Fund uh, just under a billion dollars in concessional financing. So that, I think, uh, is an indication that people are very keen to support this type of initiative. What can the world learn from South Africa's experience and how can South Africa, how do you see South Africa collaborating with the global community to accelerate this change? Yeah. I think we are um, very keen to collaborate because we are not um, in competition with one another. Carbon is a global phenomenon and the, the idea that we're putting forward is that the developing world offers the best opportunity for decarbonizing the global economy. To mitigate a ton of carbon in South Africa is a tenth of the cost of emitting an equivalent ton of carbon in Germany, for example. So our calling card uh, to the global community is to say, come to South Africa, where your tax euros will get bigger bang for buck than by decarbonizing uh, the last ton in Germany. Now, it's a slightly controversial argument, and there are all local interests and political interests involved, but I think we're getting the traction and we're getting the support that we're looking for. And finally, how do you see the power sector evolving in South I, Africa? I, I see, um, as the chief executive of the incumbent monolithic monopolist, uh, we, we are going to unbundle, uh, specifically in order to attract more private sector generation capacity. Um, we are going to see a significant decarbonization. Uh, we plan to retire 22 gigawatts of coal-fired capacity 
by 2035, which is just under half of our coal fleet. Uh, that'll remove about 100 million tons of carbon from the atmosphere every year. And um, we are going to see um, the, the trends of decarbonization, democratization, digitalization um, become very important in enabling this transition to take place. So it's, it's very exciting to see a new industry being born, as it were. Andre, thank you so much. Thank you.